G'day, everyone, and welcome to the Digital Investor Podcast. I'm your host, Matt Rudd, and today we are very lucky. Well, I'm particularly excited to have one of our recent graduates, Nicole, from America come on board. Now, the reason why this story is so, Nicole's story is so fascinating is because she's done the eight-figure sellout of a tech company. But wait, it's not everything that you expect. So Nicole and her husband started out as scientists, meteorologists, they did a startup, they built that up, they success, successfully sold it for eight figures to a big publicly listed company in America. You would think life is perfect. Wait till you hear Nicole's journey, though, because it didn't quite end up that way. Where Nicole ended up, sadly, was with some very serious health issues to the point where she had a brain tumor removed. Now you can see her here today looking beautiful and super happy and fine. So there's been a bit of a journey here, but this is particularly important for two uh, for two reasons. One is if you're inter interested in the entrepreneurial pursuit, making money online, of course, that's what Digital Investor Podcast is about. But also we know a lot of us in our community will go through or have been through similar health issues, serious health issues, um, chronic fatigue, uh, major surgery, if you've been on that journey or on that journey and looking for something to do in life, I think you are going to find today's interview absolutely fascinating. So, Nicole, big thank you for coming on to share your very personal journey here, what's and all. And actually, there's some very important parts of your journey that I missed out there that we'll get out in this interview. But big thank you for coming on today. Hey, thanks for having me. I'm so glad to be able to talk about this and help inspire other spoonies. Yeah, that's right. Well, we're going to get to the well, share with us what is the definition of spoonies? We've got it. Let's start out with that. What's a spoonie? It's based on something called spoon theory. Um, I forget the gal's name who came up with it, but she said, okay, you only have so many clean spoons in a day, right? That's your energy. So yep. today I've got 10 spoons to use and I could borrow from tomorrow's, but that means tomorrow I'm going to have even fewer spoons. I'm going to have even less energy. So that's the basic idea of spoon theory. And okay. And so instead of saying I, I have chronic illness, I say I'm a spoony. A spoony. And is that what is that is that a big saying amongst people with chronic illness you've found? But it's a commonly yes. known known term, is it term? Is Not it? always, but as as people get sick, they start finding some of these tools. Okay. So Anyone who's a spooning, this is going to be a really inspirational interview for you. So, Nicole, you, you, you and Don, your husband Don, sound like ultra high achieving go getters. You know, <laughs> entrepreneurs. So you've done multiple businesses. Where did it all start out though? Because you've actually got a really fascinating job background as well. What, what, you, what? To share with us all. What's your original background? Uh, both of our backgrounds are in meteorology. Um, we both have a bachelor's and master's in meteorology. Yeah. Um, very science-based, evidence-based stuff. Um, we knew science. We did not know business. We okay. learned that along the way. And and <laughs> in in that role, what what sort of work would you would you do? Like when you're doing a job, um, you know, you like the classic as we see in Hollywood, you know, storm chases and things like that? Well, unfortunately, storm chasing is not a job. Uh, it is okay. a hobby, a very expensive one. Yeah. It is one that we do, <laughs> even to this day. We still enjoy awesome. going storm chasing together. It's fun. Yeah. Um, chase after the tornadoes. It's great. Uh, just make sure they don't hit you. Yeah. Um, I started in weather education. So doing mm. climate and weather, teaching Oklahomans, about these things through the University of Oklahoma, along with, the, yep. and I went around the state teaching emergency managers, public safety officials, firefighters, police officers, how to read radar so they could move mm -hmm. the resources around safely and not get hit by the storms. Cool. And then, so in that journey, you, you, you and Donna are meteorologists and you did this startup and what did you guys build with, and like what what was the business that you built and then sold out it dealt with hail technology so we could tell you where and when hail fell and what the maximum hail size was wow. and that was an automated product that 
insurance companies and roofers were very keen to know. Okay. And and was that and so that was a group of you meteorologists put this together? Mm-hmm. And and what time period did it take you guys to build this up to the successful exit? It was only a few years. And oh, then right. our business started catching the interest of of other um insurance companies, of uh different data technology companies. And in part because we did things like we understood our our strengths and weaknesses as a business and understood our core values. And because of that, we were eventually acquired by CoreLogic. Nice one. So, <laughs> so yeah, it was so a big deal. It is a very well done. It is a very big deal. Now, to put it in perspective, to look at your journey, because <laughs> If you're listening to this, this is just the beginning of Nicole's amazing journey, right? What you're about to hear. What year was this that you sold that out in? I think it was about 2012, 2013, somewhere in that range. My husband would know for certain because he's the one who actually did that. At that time, I was starting to exit. Okay, I was moving to part-time. Yeah, so Don was the CEO of that mm-hmm. that business. You guys are doing a sellout, and Nicole, share with whether you know where, where was your health at that point? Because this is obviously the underlying theme of this whole story is your health challenges. Where were you at at around two thousand twelve health wise? My health was declining fast. Um, I had no energy. I was sick all the time. I was in a lot of pain. Mm-hmm. I had a lot of muscle weakness, but I had been doing Zumba, I'd been doing yoga, I'd been doing all these physical things, strengthening, and I couldn't understand why is my body not strengthening? Why is it declining? And so I went to part-time with Weather Fusion, our our first Mm -hmm. business, and that was about the time that they were starting all of the proceedings with the buyout and everything. And my husband said, look, you've really got to focus on your health. I need you to go focus on that and go see some doctors. Let's figure this out. Okay. So that, and so at that time, would you say, you know, I'm not a health expert or anything here, but you know, you you know, our community really well here at champions and you've, you've seen it within our community that when there's a lot of, a lot of people with burnout or serious health issues, did you, you know, was it diagnosed as burnout back then or or for yourself? Or what, what, how would you describe it back then? At the time, the diagnosis, and, and actually this has been confirmed by the Mayo Clinic since in 2015, mm-hmm. um, that I had fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue syndrome, and a lot of that, at least in major part, was due to burnout, to burnout. Um, and not listening to my body. Not okay. taking rest when I needed to, and just pushing through and saying, "Nope, I'm going to do this anyway." Okay. <laughs> yeah, pretty stubborn. Hence, <laughs> hence, hence, why you love the term "spoonies." You understand now. Yeah, yeah. It only took you ten years to learn that you've got X amount of yeah. energy. You, gee, you sound <laughs> like a few other people I know. <laughs> Ultra high achieving women. Oh my goodness. Um, so, you guys exited the business, and obviously hugely successful, you know, like it's eight figures. Over the next decade, let's have a look at the next part of your journey because, um, you know, the the journey, it's not all perfect. You think, okay, sail off into the sunset, exit, never have to work again, whatever. What happened over the next decade? Well, I got that diagnosis. And so, okay, I've got to slow down a bit. What can I do? Well, got a little money now. So let's look at investments. Let's look at real estate investing. So started buying up properties that made sense financially. Um, I became property manager. I systematized everything, got it all set up. It was very successful. We were getting plenty of income from that. And Mm -hmm. it was more or less passive at that point. So that was going really well. And then we bought a roofing company thinking, okay, well, we know hail and We've yep. been learning all the stuff from roofers and insurance companies. You know, we want to make this easier for people, for homeowners, and we want it to be a company they can trust. So we got into that. That was a really bad idea. Um, mm-hmm. Had ha- no hail, no hail for years. <laughs> so wow. what do you do when you have a roofing company that needs to make money 
so that you can continue on. Yep. There's no hail. So bricks and mortar business. And would you say when you look back at that now, were you over geared in that? Because so you are you happy to share to get to give our listeners yeah. a concept of are you happy to share how many um houses you had rental properties that you had going? Because again I think it was about seven. Seven, seven in total, seven or eight, somewhere in there. Nicole, including I'm, one of our old homes. So Nicole, um, it was a very I, nice home. Yeah. <laughs> Nicole, I'm seeing a recurring pattern here with you. Hi, Achiever. You're meant to be retired and watching your energy at this point. You decide to own seven homes, rental property, plus buy a bricks and mortar business, plus mm-hmm. leverage up on that. And it and so at this point, when you look back, would you say part of the reason, because if you're listening to this, this, this journey has another big turn, right? It's not just the healthier, they they go hand in hand, I would suggest, but what happened to the bricks and mortar business? It failed and it failed. led to bankruptcy. We had to declare bankruptcy because there was no way we could pay all the bills. Oh. So it took everything. It took our personal home um, that was not secure. Okay. Um, it took all the rental properties. It took all of the income, all of the systems I'd built, all those businesses I'd built, I didn't build the roofing company. That was that was supposed to be my husband's focus. Okay. Wow. But I came on board at the end and was trying to fix things and systematize things and it was it was too late. No hail for years, just took it down. So what year was this around now? Uh the bankruptcy was declared around 2019. 2019. So basically you guys lost everything. Just we lost everything. Everything that we had built over sixteen years. And so I'm guessing that's the real low point. That that would have been extraordinarily tough. Plus, on top of that, your health issues were ongoing. Yes. What What also happened with your health then around that time as well? In August of that year, I discovered this lump on my skull that was suddenly growing and. I could feel it and people were starting to notice it. It was that big. And it turned out, um, went in for a scan and it turned out it it was a massive bone tumor about the size of a large egg. And it had been growing probably my whole life. Didn't know, but it just suddenly started appearing right about then. And I lucked out the surgeons that I needed. There were three surgeons who ended up taking it out in November of that year. Um, so all three of them were in there for somewhere between six and eight hours. Um, okay. I almost lost my hearing. Uh, it was one millimeter away from eating into my ear canal. Whoa. I would have gone deaf in this year. So they were able to maintain my hearing. Um, they rebuilt my cheekbone. The cheekbone here um, was eaten away. It was gone. It would have been eaten mm-hmm. by the tumor. And so they had to replace that. And so I've got some metal in me now. I'm part cyborg, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so you have, there's an Aussie saying, you've been through the ringer, like you and Don in a major, major way. Like, so if you're listening to this, think about, you know, Nicole's journey here from the highs of doing an eight figure exit to literally seven years later, losing everything losing your health, going through a brain tumor, craniotomy, um, full on, and losing the family home. So that bankruptcy, was that the, at what point, so at what point was that the turning point too for your, for your life? Would you say when you look back at that, where, where were you at at that point? Like, how do you get ahead from that, that point major surgery? I'm, I'm presuming the surgery would have knocked you around a lot as well. Um, what do you do at that point? Um, a lot of Netflix. Okay. A lot oh, of just yep. not coping well, um, like okay. depression, anxiety. Yep. Um, and I discovered too, that just with the surgery alone, just having your skull cut open, so traumatizes your body that there's yep. things like residual depression and anxiety that come from just yep. that alone, which is wow. crazy to me. Wow. So I I expected the pain, I expected the acute stuff, but I did not expect the chronic pain that came with it or the mental health issues that came with it. 
Wow. And and Nicole, I want to say hats off to you. Look at you today and knowing you for the last two years, you're always the most, like on our champions program, if you're listening to this, Nicole's on our, as a graduate of our champions program, she's so over the top positive at um, all the boot camps. And in fact, remember, that's how I met you at one of our three day summits online. I was just chatting away to this beautiful, effervescent, happy you know, awesome person in Oklahoma. And I'm I'm thinking, oh, Nicole's unreal. And she, when you applied for champions, I remember saying to Liz, oh, we so have to accept Nicole. I want to do the interview with her because she sounds unreal. I had no idea all this was part of your story. And that was only, what, two or three years later, you completely mm-hmm. turned around your life, obviously your personality as well, because um, you're, and, and, but you were, it, that turnaround this, now, this is interesting because so for you and Don, you have bankruptcy. So there's the financial side, then there's the health side. And now, like you said, there's a full on mindset side. As anyone listening to this knows, anyone, when you're going through chronic fatigue or any of these and surgery and stuff, there is a lot of depression and mindset issues. So you've got to work on these three big areas in your life. What did you do? How long did the bankruptcy last? What What was that first? It was, I think, less than a year total not- before it was discharged. Um, yeah. And due to the pandemic, they actually didn't take our personal home until the very end. Um, so <laughs> right. during the time I was recovering from the tumor oh. removal, yeah. we had no idea, are they going to boot us out next month? Is it going to be the month after Whoa. that? And yeah. then, you know, COVID is going on. And so my husband was very worried because my health was very tenuous at the time. And so he was afraid I'd get COVID and die before the vaccine came out. And then when the vaccine came out, we immediately got that. Yep. Um, Yeah. It's, it was a, it was a really rough time. So touch and go. And obviously at this time you'd given up ever working again, I'm presuming. Yes. Yeah. I, I could, I mean, I tried being a realtor for a time, I got my license. I I worked with a brokerage that was really great. They were very understanding that I have chronic illnesses, um, but it was really hard to make back all those fees that I was paying. I I wasn't able to produce enough, okay. sell enough homes. So, and for you as a, a high achieving, ultra high achieving type person, <laughs> that would have been doubly frustrating as well. I'm presuming. Uh, I felt I felt dead. Okay. I, Yep. I felt like my life was over. Um, it was yeah. just plod through each day. Um, I mean, it came down to some days, you know, I've got to get out of bed and make it at least to the couch. Okay. If I can at least do that, that's a win. Wow. Some days, if I could make it further than that and I can get dressed, I can, you know, put on a hat so mm-hmm. that I don't have to worry about my hair or my incision or anything like that. Just put something on, something cheerful, some bright colors. And that sort of thing helped yeah. me get through some of those really tough times. And of course, okay. my husband. Obviously, yeah. my husband. <laughs> Go Don, like far out. And then, <laughs> I mean, the, the turnaround. So how, how the... How the hell did you guys in Oklahoma discover Matt and Liz and eBusiness Institute down here in Australia? What what happened there? Um, yeah, all that Netflix time and YouTube time. <laughs> the YouTube yep. time actually um, paid off. Paid off. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> I, I don't consider YouTube time a waste anymore. <laughs> yeah. Because my husband was looking through YouTube, just scanning through things, not really necessarily looking for an opportunity, mm-hmm. but just trying to tune out and just try and cope with minute to minute. Yep. And he came across eBusiness Institute videos on there and he's like, whoa, <laughs> this is this is something different. Okay. And I'm pretty sure he's the one who first came. Yeah, he, he was the first one who came across Lucy and Gary's video. And he looked at that and said, my wife can do this too. She can do this. I know she can. So he showed me the videos and said, you especially have to watch this one, the one with Lucy and Gary in it. And I watched that and I said, oh my gosh, there's, there's a possible way forward. I could work again. And I've been able to actually work full time 
for not not for long periods, but yep. for short periods of time, I can do full time with this. Yeah, yeah. That, that it's and been Nicole, happening this past year. That this is awesome. This is why I wanted to interview you today. And for anyone listening, Nicole's referring to Lucy, who had a very similar um, chronic fatigue. Was told she could never work again and make sure you go and listen to that interview because and I want to say a big thank you to Lucy because Lucy we know you've inspired so many people now around the world who yeah. with Lucy's story of how being told she could never ever work again again ultra high achiever like yourself Nicole and as you know Nicole you you know Lucy really well now you've been on champions you know she's one of our coaches with us but she has a significant you know seven figure online business working from home in a nice relaxed manner and now nicole you're following in lucy's footsteps and helping to inspire yes. other people that this can be done as well even if you're given a di- a scary diagnosis of you know you'll never ever work again you could you, you, that's just the way it is look at you nicole so let's look at what you're achieving over these because life has turned around like i said and i think anyone would agree watching this if you're watching this video look at nicole you would have no idea of nicole's personal story what she just described and don't worry nicole does not dwell on it for one minute i i had to ask her to be on this interview to to share this story so i do want to reiterate big thank you there but nicole what have you enjoyed over the last two years like what what's been what 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 are you doing now what what let's start with that first sorry Give us a list of some of your achievements, just real quick run through. How many websites are you building at the moment? Um, I think I'm up to eight or nine at this point. <laughs> yeah, you do not go <laughs> slow. You're meant to be taking it easy. I hope your doctor is your doctor or your medical team is not listening to this. So nope. eight or eight or nine websites, plus you and Don have bought a couple of sites as well. So yep. sites, so uh, bought- and that might actually include those as well, um, like okay. the, yep. the barbecue site that yep. uh, we'll be rehabbing and hopefully yep. getting some new content up soon, some new videos and things like that. And and obviously you've got a passion site. Tell us about that. You, you, we can <laughs> see it in the video those, right now if, if you're watching this video. I'm sure. The- have, have a guess as to what Nicole's passion site is. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Because it's just such a cute site. <laughs> um. I, I've been known as Hat Lady Nicole for some yeah. time. So yeah. <laughs> I, I wear a lot of vintage hats, vintage yeah. look, kind of the retro. I do cool. a lot of 20s to 50s fashion. Um, that's just how I like to go around. Yep. Um, it's fun. It gets people, people smile and they're happy. They, yep. they like that kind of stuff and it cool. makes me feel good. So yeah, I've got uh, a site on chronic illness and, and the hats I wear. Um, yep. Yeah. And how much was the hat that you bought? To give us an example. It was a beautiful looking <laughs> was- hat. And yeah, I, I commented on it before the interview. I was saying, oh, I love your hat. And um, and then when you told me, I nearly fell off the chair. How much did the hat cost? <laughs> 50 cents. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. So I tried so that, to offer them more because it was perfect. I could tell it, it's as it's a real vintage hat, and it was yeah. obvious it'd been sitting in a hat box for fifty years, yeah. untouched. Maybe somebody wore yeah. it twice to church, and yeah. I felt so bad because it was at a thrift store, and I want to support them. And I said, yep. well, "You know, do you want at least ten bucks or something?" And like, nope. Nope. Fifty cents. <laughs> okay. And you, Nicole, you know, the, you and I were talking before the the um this interview, this is a, that's a really good niche online. Uh, mm-hmm. What do we call it? Repurposed clothes or, or um, what's the, there's a few different names, isn't there? Um, for this yeah. niche, it's a really good, it's really popular like here and in America and around the world, it's having a big resurgence, people repurposing old fashion items. There's lots of trading. So there's a, you know, like follows our classic thing. It's a it's very sub niche that you can build a really cool information site around. And your personal story behind it is awesome. And you saw the beautiful hats on your back wall there as well. It looks awesome. You're, you're that's a very small selection. <laughs> yeah. So you're you're a subject <laughs> expert. So you're going to find this easy to to ride. And so yes. you basically on our course, what's really cool is watching your development and to read your final accountability when you said you know, the changes that have happened for you and on over this last, let's say, two years um, is 
you, you've had a go at every single strategy we've taught, which I do want to congratulate you on. So you, so you literally spent that first year on champions. Like we said, it was just a learning year for you just to get in and try because you had to reskill yourself in, in digital skills, yes. obviously. So whilst you had a tech company, you've never done this sort of a thing online with blogs and, and buying and selling websites. No, not with that. I, I did used to do some old HTML sites. Um, I did code a, a PHP site once okay. to yep. sell some of my jewelry. Cause I, I used to do some, well, I still do on occasion. Um, retro look vintage look uh jewelry that's handcrafted um but hard to sell that kind of stuff in this market so um yeah and one of the other skills that i do want to mention that you've done if you're listening to this because you know think of nicole's if you're listening think of nicole's serious health issues um you still i'm presuming you still need to be very mindful of your health as as the experts have said to you, you're not meant to be working or you'll never work again. You've also tried, I believe, our digital agency strategy. So you're building websites for local businesses. How the hell do you do that, you know, working from home? And how have you found that? Like, is that, does that drain a lot of energy for you? Or like, you just like lightly having a go at it, but how are you finding that particular um, strategy, money-making strategy? I'm trying to make sure I don't take on too many clients at once. Good. Okay. Um, I'm trying <laughs> to do one at a time. And then my husband's like, oh, well, we could go talk to this person. We could talk to this person. He's yeah. thinking about joining BNI soon here Good. locally. So he's like, I'll get you all these opportunities. And I'm like, whoa, wait a minute here. <laughs> Let's slow down. So- We're only going to do one to two at a time. That's Good. it. i um, working with my brother-in-law right now on his second business All right. and working on building that up. Uh, started that on our uh, trip to Japan. And so was working on that and nice on uh, While you're building traveling. Hat Lady Nicole. Okay, cool. Uh, plus your other seven or so websites. So, you, so have you, for you... <laughs> Do, being able to do this journey, I guess it's a life changer because now you and like we said to you in the original interview, you and Don, it, it's perfect because so Don's gone out, he's he's got a job again. Mm-hmm. So he that's how you, you're keeping the, the finances going, getting back on your feet there. But then yes. for you, you can now start to bring in some money through the online businesses because you can work on them at home. Yes. And that's pretty much your setup. So can you doing the digital agency thing, can you get out and network and stuff? Or you mentioned Don then, like, is that something, where's your health at? Or is it more you're doing the website building? Overall, my health is better. I have been slowly working up on doing some physical therapy. Um, I've been um, going to the gym more. I had worked with a personal trainer before the bankruptcy. Okay. So I had been slowly easing into more rigorous movement. Um, and I know there are times when my body can't handle it. So I got to, you know, go back down and then work my way slowly back up again. Mm-hmm. Um, but I know how to do that now. And, and the flexibility of being able to work on the websites yeah. is fantastic. And and because how do you find it? You know, staying up late to do because you're always at every single one of our events, Nicole. Whenever we, you know, like each week we run a webinar, as you know, for champions, and you are always there. You're always there for the whole boot camps. How do you find managing your energy working online now? Is it is it tough or is it pretty easy? It's the best schedule possible for me. Um, okay. I've yep. I've always been an extreme night owl, um, an extreme late chronotype. Yeah. And I didn't realize there were such people. I was told, <laughs> you know, you gotta you gotta set your schedule to, you know, you're gonna be doing a nine to five for the rest of your life. Yep. Um, and you gotta fit the schedule. My body doesn't. It never has. Okay, cool. According to my mom, I wanted to be up between like two AM and six AM. That's that was my okay. awake time. Okay. And that coincides perfectly with the uh, Australian time. <laughs> so <laughs> <laughs> and because of that, I have uh, now I've got a team that I've been building up online yep. and I've got um, some people in like Bangladesh and in Indonesia now that I work with. And 
when we first started talking, they're like, oh, but, you know, our hours might be really off. And nope, I'll, I'll be up the same time. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so for you, th th that's what um, I did want to bring up as well. And thank you. You can, with this an online business, as you're finding, you can get this extra leverage. It doesn't have to be you physically doing all this work. It, you can now leverage it by hiring your your team members. And what sort of team, what, what was your first hire? Uh, my first hire was um, a dog trainer, a certified dog trainer. Oh, for, okay. Oh, it's a writer. What, so you, yeah, that's for your dog uh, trainer. An expert. Yeah. Okay, cool. She had and a background you, in journalism. A, a yep. degree, I believe, in journalism too. Okay, and nice. she's certified dog trainer. Uh, my first purchase was um, a dog training site. It was basically just the domain name. It, yep. Someone had put a, a spammy junk site on it. I just got rid of all of that. Started yep. afresh using web dev and just started with that first writer. And okay. then I had hired a second writer who she has two dogs that are adorable. She likes to take pictures of them. Mm -hmm. And she was uh, a vet tech for a time. Right. So she knows dogs very well. So that was my initial team for that site. So where have you found these, these writers? What, what, like, how did you hire them? Upwork. Upwork. Found them through really? Upwork. Yep. So if Just you're listening to this. put out a. And and is that where you found your team member in Bangladesh as well? Yes. Yep. yep. So is that a so you've hired a techie now as well, presumably? Yep, that's the techie. Yep. And um, I've also it... got a VA now. Um, awesome. Through All right. onlinejobs.ph. Okay, cool. So you've built out this nice team so you can get massive leverage. So it's not you. Nicole, you should not be physically wearing yourself down or energetically wearing yourself down. You're a high no. achiever. See, so in a way, well, this is what I wanted people to hear is even someone like yourself and like Lucy and like, a, you know, you know, some of the other members in our community, similar journey, where even when you're a high achieving individual and you've been knocked for a massive six, like what you and Don went through back in 2019, mind-blowing but also on the health side but now you can get back up on your feet and you can you don't have to be that person doing absolutely everything you can just gently keep adding to your team as you go through and building up your portfolio of websites it's just just absolutely phenomenal nicole to, and so inspirational i'm hoping for anyone i'm presuming for anyone listening to this no excuses to all of us who are you know healthy and and have the energy you you obviously handle this well and you're enjoying it. So is there any, before we, we finish up, is there any bits of advice you can give to someone who maybe is in it, who has a similar health challenge to yourself? Any advice or even inspiration that you can give to someone? Take it slowly, step by step, record everything you're doing and remind yourself that you are proceeding. You are putting in all of the steps you're doing the reps you're it's yep. it, like matt says yep. it's reps 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 yep that's how you learn it and we can take it more slowly it is okay it's not going to be the end of the world yep perfect thank you nicole that is that that's really good advice if you're listening to this start out small like nicole has even though nicole's a high achiever and will go out and you know hit the ball out of the park, but she had to learn. I think that's a bit what's been good for you on this journey too with us, Nicole, is yeah, you've seen the best success stories are where we start out small, like Lucy and Gary, the classic, you know, that we, poor old Gary, I made him buy websites for like under $200 for a year. And, I, you know, so to now where fast forward to now where they're doing big things. And I think that's a really good lesson for if you do need to manage your health, one day at a time, and that's what I've seen through coaching people like yourself to big success stories, and that's really good advice. So a big thank you. Start out small, learn how to build websites, learn how to buy websites, start out small with small ones and build up your energy, get the skills, and then like Nicole's done, start adding to your team so it's not you that's wearing yourself out 
doing things. You've got a leverage team and you and Don have just done a trip overseas and, you know, to Japan. I mean, well done. And thank you so much for coming along today to share your story, Nicole. It's just awesome. If you haven't, if you want to get started on your journey like Nicole did and learn the overriding strategy here, obviously make sure you go and do our free masterclass training on how to buy and build websites. And it's literally where Nicole started. It would have been one of those videos that Don and Nicole saw all those years ago. And I think you'll agree with me. We're also grateful that Nicole and Don did go on this journey and here, fast forward to today and to be able to share her amazing story. So thank you so much, Nicole. Awesome.